In this video, we're going to go over how you can get and take a much better selfie and what kinds of things you should avoid. Hello, I'm Carlos Quintero from Media on Q. And in this video, what I'd like to go through are several different tips and things that you can actually do to end up with a much better selfie. Because we've all seen the pictures on social media, whether it be Instagram, Facebook, or any other platform where people's faces are completely distorted, as in they have zero features or they completely blur out their nose. And that's because they're trying to fix or correct things that they could have done when they were arranging the picture to end up with a better picture. So we're going to talk about several things that you can do to end up with a much better selfie. Okay, tip number one, avoid overhead light at all costs. Overhead light is not your friend when you're trying to take a selfie and you can see exactly what the overhead light effect does to the phone. Tip number two, avoid direct sunlight. Nothing looks worse than someone squinting, trying to stay focused on whomever is taking the picture. And on top of that, it's kind of painful. It makes my, yeah, it, it just, it doesn't look right. You'll never have a good picture in direct sunlight. To top that off, direct sunlight is going to showcase everything and every possible flaw in your skin because that is the harshest type of light that you can go after. The other thing that direct sunlight will help you do is it will help you blow out the skin. And what, what I mean by blow out is it takes the midtones, which are generally skin tones, and it takes all the highlights and it makes the sensor overload. That's called clipping the highlights. That's what direct sunlight will help you achieve and why you should absolutely avoid it. Okay, so what happens if you have to shoot in direct sunlight? So let's say you're outdoors or something like that, right? The best thing to do is to have the sun behind you so that the highlight is not all crashing into your face, allowing you to keep your eyes open, stare at the camera and smile. Okay, another thing that you could do if you are shooting in harsh sunlight, which basically means anytime after 11 a.m. and before 3 p.m. So if you're taking a selfie during that time, whether it be indoors or outdoors, and the sun is coming through, use anything you can to create a little bit of diffusion. That's what I'm doing right here. So as an example, what is diffusion? You can use something like a curtain, right? So that curtain in front of the sunlight softens it up enough to allow for this type of exposure. Now watch what happens when the diffusion is moved. We're back to that nastiness of harsh sunlight where I can't see. Bring the diffusion in and all of a sudden life gets a lot better. You'll end up with a much better selfie. Okay, another tip that will help you take a much better selfie is to take advantage of what photographers call open shade. And open shade really means that while you might be in the middle of the day out in full sun, you find a spot that has complete shade. Everywhere that you look, regardless of where you're at, it's completely shaded. That allows for a really even diffused flat light that will result in a much better selfie. This next tip, move away from walls. This look sucks. So when you move away from a wall and you create depth, it adds to your picture or your selfie, right? So now you can see my environment. While I am at the front end or the foreground of the environment, there are layers. I'm here, the TV's in the middle, and then the paintings that are being hit by the sunlight are the furthest away. That 3D layering effect adds a lot to selfies. Okay, for this next tip, 
is to basically think about what it is that you're doing, right? So as an example, in this scenario, I have a lamp and then I have a painting on the wall. And what I did is I placed myself roughly in between the two. So I'm being framed by other objects. That will help improve your selfie. A couple of other things that you should consider, and I see a lot of different people in a variety of age groups, some of them mostly on the older side, is they wanna hide their neck. Now, this look, when you're taking a selfie, is not attractive. This look, when you're taking a selfie, is not attractive. So think about what might be natural. Now, the other thing that you probably should avoid is doing a squaring off on the camera. It's always a little bit more pleasing when you're not directly squared off, but rather slightly angled. So my shoulder is slightly more forward. This shoulder is slightly further back. This eye is slightly closer. This eye is slightly further back. I'm still looking at the camera, but I'm now a little bit more in a more pleasing type of pose. So those are a couple of things that you should consider. Okay, so this is now a wide angle lens on my iPhone 10. And as you can see, it takes in a lot more of the environment. A couple of things to keep in mind is that the closer I get, the more distorted my facial features will get. So if I am really close on a wide angle lens, or if your camera has two lenses and you're using the wide angle and you're too close to it, look at how exaggerated my nose is. I have a big nose and that's fine, but is it really this big? So those are a couple of things that you should keep in mind when you're thinking about your selfie or your mobile photography. I hope that you found these tips helpful. And if you haven't already, consider subscribing. Until next time, I'm Carlos Quintero from Media on Q, helping you compete in today's web economy. And hopefully, you'll end up taking better selfies very soon.